Looking to take that family on that next great cruise vacation? Can't decide between Royal Caribbean or Norwegian? Stay tuned as we compare these two great cruise lines. Our special guest today is Kathy Schmaus, an independent travel advisor for Cruise Holidays of Vieira, located in Melbourne, Florida. Kathy has been meeting the needs of her clients in and around Melbourne and across the country since 2017. Hi, Kathy. Welcome to RTE Travel Talk. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Great to have you with us, Kathy. So, Kathy, we get a lot of questions about from our viewers and listeners about family cruising, especially on the two big lines that seem to specialize in at Royal Caribbean and the region. I kind of like to delve into that a little bit with you today. What's the difference? Is one better than the other? I was hoping I could speak to an expert that could enlighten our viewers and listeners. I think I can share some good information with your viewers. Sounds yeah. good. So let's get going. So first of all, which is the number one choice for families do, in your view? Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean? Okay. Yeah. Why would that be, Kathy? They are truly uh, the leader in family cruising vacations. Mm -hmm. They have, I think, the most cabins that are that are family friendly a lot of connecting cabins okay. larger cabins they also have a great kids program that goes from babies all the way to age 17 mm -hmm. and they've got more than any cruise line stuff to do on the ships it's just remarkable especially their newer ships the big oasis class ships you you have to do a minimum of seven days on those ships to just touch everything that they have to offer so it's a really good they have a really good selection so how does how does that compare with for example norwegian now on, on some of their newer ships norwegian is trying to do what royal has been doing for a while right they are including things but an interesting thing so the bliss and the joy their newer ships that came out before the pandemic they put racetracks on the back of the ships so they've got triple decker you know, go-kart tracks, right? but you have to pay for it. It's not included. And I think their thinking is that if they didn't charge a surcharge, that the lines would be just incredible and you'd never get on. And their laser tag and some of the other things, you have to pay a surcharge to do those things. Where Royal Caribbean, all their activities on their ships are free. They're included. Oh, that, that is quite a big difference. It is a big difference. So yeah. with that though, like I kind of I kind of get the idea of the surge charts to to reduce the number of lines. Have mm -hmm. you had families tell you that there's long lines on Royal Caribbean for these activities? No. Yeah. No. You know, the bigger ships they've got two flow riders now. Right. One where it's all stand up and one where you're bodyboarding. So that kind of splits the the clientele between those who want to try to stand up and those that don't. Right. So that helps. So you've got two of those, just all, all kinds of stuff that they've got. And then that course, the sport court where you can play basketball, pickleball, all kinds of stuff on the sport court. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about the itineraries for a minute. Are the itineraries pretty much the same between Royal Caribbean They're and They're pretty Norwegian? much the same. Yeah. Both cruise lines home port in the north in north america with Car uh, caribbean ports mexico bahamas hawaii alaska uh, canada for new england they both go right. to those itineraries and then they both do seasonal itineraries to the mediterranean northern europe not as many to the exotics like asia and africa and australia but they do have they do have ships down there okay because okay. those are longer cruises the families really max out at seven days and the families are going when the kids are out of school. So North America is really where the families concentrate, but they're, they're very similar. They both have private islands. Okay. Um, Stirrup K is the Norwegian island. And then you have Coco K, which Royal Caribbean spent a half a billion dollars renovating wow. and putting in, <laughs> putting in a full blown water park and blowing out the pool. The Oasis pool is gigantic. It's the biggest freshwater pool in the Caribbean. And so they split their island between the thrill side and the chill side. So thrills is the water park and the zip line and all of that fun stuff. And then you still have the other half of the island that they kind of left untouched with just sun chairs. So if you just want a beach day and you just want to relax, you can do that as well. And of course, 
The big thing is that they added the overwater bungalows, kind of what Sandals does right. in theirs, where you can rent those for the day that you're there at Coco Cay. And they can hold up to 10 people. But people can get off on both private islands, either Stirrup Cay or Coco Cay. Mm -hmm. And you can the other enjoy, beautiful thing about Coco you know, Cay. In my opinion, the best thing they did was they put in a pier. So two ships at a time can go to Coco Cay on any day. Stirrup Cay, you're still anchoring off and tendering in. And that, you know, that pause, that causes problems if the winds or the seas are high and the tenders can't go, then you don't get your fun day on the private island. Royal right. remedied that by putting their pier right. in. Yeah, and that can make a big difference. It's if, if on a seven-day cruise, one of the big events is the private island and all of a sudden you can't get there. Yes. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's just not safe for the tenders to operate. Yeah. No, exactly. But it doesn't doesn't stop the disappointment that you didn't get to do that. So yeah. Tell me about the ships. Now, I know the Oasis class is huge. I think there's about mm -hmm. 6,000 guests. Um, yep. The new how, one. The wonder. <laughs> <laughs> How does that compare? How do, how do the ship sizes compare between Nor Norwegian and Royal Caribbean? Their older ships are very similar in size. It's right. the newer ones that are different. When Royal started with their Oasis class back in the early 2000s with the Oasis of the Seas, they, they made a commitment that they're going bigger and better. Right. So they now have the Oasis, the Allure, the Harmony, the Symphony, and now the Wonder. Right. And the wonder, like you said, you can cruise with 7,000 of your closest friends when it's at full capacity. Norwegian's but, in saying, taken... but, but in saying that, though, because I've been aboard the Allure and it doesn't feel like you're. No, it doesn't. No, they do a very good job. It's amazing. Of, mm -hmm, yeah. of making sure you don't feel like you're traveling with that many people yeah. because there's so much to do. Right. Now, Norwegian's taking a slightly different track. They've decided that with their new ship, the Prima, and the one coming out later this year, the Viva, right. that they would rather sacrifice the number of cabins and people on a ship to have larger cabins okay. and, and bigger public spaces. So the Prima has, their cabins are 25% bigger, including the inside cabins than your average contemporary brand cruise ship. Right. So that's kind of a different, that's you a know, different take. philosophy of what they're doing with their ships. Right. So yeah. Norwegian's biggest ship carries a maximum of 4,000 people. We're now, but, you know, oh. Royal Caribbean is now 7,000. So they're, right. they're markedly bigger ships. Right. But on that note, in the Norwegian line, now you correct me if I'm wrong, but it really can make a difference to your vacation, which which ship you choose. Absolutely. Because like even some of the older ships on Norwegian, uh, like the Dawn and the Gem and the Jewel, they're going to be quite a bit different than the Prima, the Bliss and the Escape. Absolutely. There's no bells and whistles on those ships. Yeah. The, they were built in a time where that wasn't what thing. cruising was all about. Yeah. And then you have the Epic. I don't know if you've ever been on the Epic, but the Epic is a very oddly designed ship. Okay. And I find her to be very dark, but she has excellent itineraries. They have her over in the Mediterranean. So, but I also look at Mediterranean cruises differently. Mediterranean cruises are not about the ship. Right. I look at cruises in the Med and Europe as a mode of transportation, because to me, it's all about the destination and you're off the ship more than you're on. Yeah. So if it's not the best ship, that's okay because you're getting the destinations that you want. So that's kind of the trade-off. So kind of what you're saying though, it, it really comes down to the value of having a good travel advisor in your corner. Absolutely. Because that person's going to know those ships. And yes. Can, can direct you in the right direction. You know, when I meet with clients for the first time and we sit down and I get to know them, I ask them a lot of questions about their previous travels, be it cruising or by land. I get to know their wants and desires and what makes them happy and what they don't like. Yeah. And then I know so much about all the different cruise lines and the ships, then I know where to put them and, and make a great vacation for them. For sure. Right on, right on. So you mentioned the size of the staterooms on the newer Norwegian ships. And we also talked earlier there about Royal Caribbean have the, having the most availability for family size staterooms with connecting rooms and, and that sort of thing. Both, both cruise lines offer offer both. Yes. So 
Yes. So what do you, like if you, if you have a family of four going, for example, what do you recommend? Do you get two staterooms or can people share one stateroom? How does that work? Depending on the age of the children, both cruise lines, if you've got a 16 year old, the 16 year old can be in a cabin with a 10 year old or a 12 year old. If, if they're next door to mom and dad, if you've got more girls, I say get two cabins because then you've got two bathrooms. <laughs> so, and, and that's important because if yeah. you've got four and they're teenagers and you're fighting over one one bathroom oh, and they're, they're girls, that's not a good combination. <laughs> yeah. So, so it depends on the configuration of the family. I, it also depends on if they want to splurge for a balcony. A lot of clients that I have are not in their cabins very much. The younger ones, they're exactly. off having fun and everything. Yeah. So in order to make it affordable for them to have two cabins, I'll put them in an inside cabin connecting. And then they've got two bathrooms, they've got room to spread out, and then they're off having fun and they use the cabin to sleep and shower and change clothes right. and yeah. save money and yeah. have, have more money to do the fun things, the excursions and the other things that they want to make their vacation special. So unless, so unless the balcony is a real thing for mom and dad, sometimes right. two insides connecting insides are, are the best way to go. Yeah. We were on Disney a few years back mm -hmm. and they had an adults only area. Is, is there such a thing on Norwegian and, and uh, Royal Caribbean? Royal Caribbean does. It's called a solarium okay. and it's on most of their ships. Uh, all the newer ships have it. It's at the back of the ship. Mm -hmm. It's shaded and they have their healthy restaurant back there so okay. during the day you can get breakfast and lunch there included with your cruise fare that have more salads and more healthy options and then they have a kind of more of a plunge pool back there and they've got some sunny areas but a lot of pergola type thing right. so that you've got more shade back there. And then at night, that restaurant becomes a specialty dining and it would be an extra charge to eat there. But during the day, it's included in your fare. We spent time in the Solarium restaurant. On I the love lure. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a great tip for people because it's a great place to have a nice quiet breakfast and it's beautiful yep. in the morning. Definitely. Uh, Norwegian doesn't really have anything like that across their fleet they have i think it's on the epic actually they've got the h2o but that's more of a, an evening it's like they turn the back of the ship into a nightclub kind of thing for adults only but they don't have an adults only sun deck area that you can get a break from the kids okay speaking of kids do, is there kids menus available in most of the restaurants absolutely or all? yeah okay. both of them have kid menus and they have the standard kid fare hamburgers right. spaghetti with you know sauce macaroni right. and cheese there's probably about five or six options for the kids on that menu so yeah they've yeah. they've got it covered now you and i both know that one of the big things on these newer ships now are is especially restaurants and specialty dining are families welcome are kids welcoming the specialty yeah. restaurants so, they sure so are the other thing about what they do for families is the kids club so yes. both cruise lines have very good um, kid programs. Uh, one thing that I do like about Royal Caribbean's program is they divide the teens into two groups where Norwegian, the teen group is 13 to 17. Royal divides them 12 to 14 and then 15 to 17. And I kind of like that because I think 13 to 17 is a pretty big spread and there's a big difference between 13 year olds and 17 year olds. Yes. And then having them split into two groups yeah, I think is is a better way to yeah. go with with the kids. I feel that Royal has much stronger kind of support systems for families on the ship. They've got what they call the Babies to Go program, where you can pre-order diapers, wipes, and cream and baby food, so you don't have to lug it on to the cruise. Your you know in your luggage, so you can order it through them, and it'll be in your stateroom when you get there. They also offer daytime and evening baby and tot babysitting, which is for an extra fee, right. but you can at least get private babysitting even during the day on a port day where you want to leave the baby and go have fun. You can pay for babysitting that way. Norwegian does port days is like daycare. It's like group babysitting. It's kind of running the, okay. the kids thing if you want to leave your kids, but they also have to be older. They have to be five. It's only five to 12 year olds that are able okay. to do that. Kathy, do you see a lot of families traveling with younger children, like three or less? Yes. 
<laughs> you do. Surprisingly. Yeah. I personally, when my kids were young, would never have wanted to do that. I just, that just wasn't me because of all the gear that you have to, yeah. you know, bring along and everything. But Royal is making it easier and easier for you to bring infant and toddlers along. So yes, more and more. And I feel like younger parents today are far more freewheeling than I think parents of my generation. So <laughs> they're just going to, they're going to bring those kids along and, and that's okay. You know, and I yeah. think Royals recognize that. So they're just making it easier and easier for them to do that. You know, when you think about it, it, it probably makes sense because both mom and dad are working in this day yes. and age. And yes. If they're going to get a break, you know, there's not always a set of grandparents or sitters that, that can look after them. So they got the kids have to be in tow. Yeah. And, you know, cruising is the perfect way to have a, a family vacation where you can have as much together time as you want. But you also have the ability with all the, the services that are offered yeah. to get a little bit of adult time, too. Oh, here's another thing that Royal does. It's called My Family, My Time Dining. So you go into the main dining room and the kids are served their meal first. And then the kids club staff come and take them back to the club for babysitting. And mom and dad get to finish their meal alone and then maybe go to the show or something like that and have have a date night, so to speak. And the kids are having fun in the um, the kids club while they're doing that. Oh, great. So you've got a family in your office. What would you ask them to direct them to either Nor Norwegian or Royal Caribbean? What, how, how would you make that decision or make that recommendation? I think I would ask, number one, what's more important, keeping the kids happy or keeping you as parents happy? You know, what's, what's the balance there of kid activities versus adult activities? How much, how important is it for you to be in a traditional dining room? Because that's a big difference between Norwegian and Royal. Royal still has the traditional main dining. You go to the same table in the same dining room at the same time with the same wait staff every night. Right. Norwegian has their freestyle. They've always had it. There's three restaurants that are considered main dining. They're included in your fare, but you go in like a restaurant. You queue up and take a table and your wait staff will be different. You can eat in all three, you know, just rotate. Or go to the same one every night if you want. They're serving the same food. They just have a, a blue dining room and a yellow. They're slightly different in their decor, but the menus are the same. So, you know, so that's an important thing. Some people don't like that freestyle. They like having the same table and the same thing. So that that's a big thing, too. Well, from my perspective, that's really interesting because that, in my view, is part of the cruise experience. Yes. Your, your wait staff gets to know you. Yes. And I can't. The, the amount of great memories that we've had sharing stories and ad even onshore adventures with some of our the wait staff is yes is, is it's wonderful that's that's part of it and if so that's something I that's agree important totally to yeah. I have a group I'm escorting a group no kids not a family group on Norwegian in May of this year to the Mediterranean and it's kind of disappointing because I really want on embarkation day for the group to eat together. Knowing the way freestyle operates, I called and said, you know, I've got this group of 18 people. We really would love to eat together. Is there a way for you to make that happen? They're like, no, sorry, can't do it. And I was like, so we've got to show up at the restaurant at the same time and hope we might get tables close to each other. Mm. Yeah, pretty much. So I was like, oh, <laughs> that's disappointing, you know. <laughs> oh, we can we can make reservations and make sure you sit together in specialty dining where you have to pay extra money for, right. but not there is no such thing as a main dining room on Norwegian. And they don't do formal nights, you know, everything is very loose and casual. They designate one night. If you want to dress up, you can. Um, they'll have the photographers out, but it's not truly designated a formal night the way Royal Caribbean does. So if you like dressing up and that's important to you to have a couple of nights where it's special and you're not going to get that on Norwegian. So Royal still has the formal nights. Yeah. But they're very much optional in this day and age. Oh, absolutely. Everything's optional. Yeah. Um, I mean, even on the the premium and higher uh, brands. So we spent a lot. We spent a lot of time today talking about Royal Caribbean and and Norwegian with with a focus on on Royal Caribbean. But both of them are actually great cruise lines, and you're going to have Absolutely. a good experience. Yeah, and you're going to have a good experience on both. Yes, for sure. 
Yeah. Kathy, what would you say, you know, if you had to pick two top things about Norwegian and the two top things about Royal Caribbean, what would they be? I think the number one thing about Norwegian is their free at sea program. They brought that into being in 2017 and it was going to be a temporary thing and mm -hmm. they've never done away with it where you get a free drink package, a free specialty dining and uh, some free Wi-Fi minutes and a $50 shore excursion credit in every port that you go to. And that's okay. for the cabin. So with their drink packages on Royal Caribbean, they never give away drink packages anymore. They're, right. they're just not going to. They'll discount them pre-cruise for a little bit. Like I think right now, if you buy one, you get one half off, that kind of thing. What a lot of people don't understand is that when you buy a drink package, you still have to pay gratuities on that drink package. Right. So that when you spend $80 a day for a package that includes alcohol, you're paying another 18% on top of that for the gratuity. Now, what Norwegian does is they give you the drink package, so you don't pay the $80 a day, but they, they still make you pay the gratuity. And they've come up with a flat dollar amount that you pay before you cruise. So say on a on a 10-day cruise, the drink package is free and the gratuity is $200. So you're drinking for $20 a day. That's two drinks a day you break even, I think that's a really good deal. Okay. If you get the drink package on Royal and say it's 30% off, so you're looking at 50 something dollars a day plus right. the 18% gratuity, it, it really adds up. The other thing is I think Norwegian does better promotions. Right now they're running 50% off every guest. Royal has been 30% off every guest for quite a while now and they're not budging from that. And to be honest, they don't have to budget. The, the right. demand is so high. Right. The, the brand new ship, The Wonder, as an example. Normally, a seven-day Caribbean cruise out of one of the Florida ports is going to run you, for an inside cabin, it's going to run you five or $600 per person. Right. On The Wonder, it's over $1,000 a person <laughs> for an inside cabin. And I can tell you right now, through spring break, that ship has been sold out for months. People are willing to pay it. They love what's on that ship. You know, so Royal, there's no reason for Royal to give away anything because number one, they've done a really good job with their loyalty program. But, you know, Norwegian's got their loyal following too. They've There are a lot of people that, will only cruise Norwegian. They absolutely love it. They like the relaxed atmosphere. They don't want the traditional dining. The ships are beautiful, and especially the new ones. The, the Prima is just gorgeous, just gorgeous. So it really comes down to, at the end of the day, if you with you as a family, having a good, solid conversation with your travel advisor to find the, the ship yep. and the itinerary it's, that's the best fit for you. Yep. And I think if I heard you correctly, now you tell me if I'm wrong, Royal Caribbean, the ships are the destination. Yes, absolutely. Norwegian is about destinations. Yes, that is a very good way to put it. And you can say that a lot about the Caribbean ships, even on some of the premium brands, because once you get into Alaska and you're going to Europe, as I said before, the destination is way more important. I was very surprised that Norwegian built the Bliss for Alaska. And that was the first ship that they put that go-kart on the back. And I thought, isn't that odd? Because Caribbean cruises are all about the ship because you yeah. have so many sea days. And Alaska's not about the ship, but yet you put your biggest bells and whistles on this Alaska ship. But again, she's doing really well. People, you know, she's doing round trips from Seattle. Yeah. So, you know, if you don't want to go all the way to Vancouver or to Anchorage to get on a ship and you just want to do a seven day Alaska, you can't beat the bliss. She's got this amazing three-story observation lounge at the front of the ship that they sacrificed something like 150 cabins. Wow. And it's got a bar and these lounge chairs and this just big gigantic wall of glass. So yeah. as you're going up into one of the fjords or towards the glacier and you're there, you just see all the magnificent vista in front of you um and she's she's one of the first ships that had the white metal versus all the brass very updated cool colors more yeah. of a boutique -y hotel feel to her um she's quite amazing so kathy when it comes to families and pricing between for royal caribbean and norwegian is there any difference that 
you know, clients should be aware of? There's one major difference between okay. the two. It's it's when they run their kids' sale-free programs. They treat the age of the kids differently. Okay. It, for Norwegian, their kids are from zero to 17. So when they offer a kid sale-free, anybody up to age 17 will go without paying cruise fare. Royal Caribbean, on the other hand, considers children up to age 12. So when they run their kids sale-free, mm. if your children are teenagers, you're paying full fare for them. You do not get the kids sale-free. That's, That's a, a big, big difference. That. That that is indeed a big difference. Yes, it is. Okay. And so, and the other thing, Norwegian doesn't run their kids sale free on every itinerary. So you have to kind of find that. And I and I can find that for a client. When Royal Caribbean runs them, they're pretty much fleet wide. Okay. But they will, just like Disney does. They will not offer it during peak. So right now they're running it, but come May, it goes away for the whole summer and then comes back again in September. But it, the, the big the big thing is the age. So if yeah. you've got a 13-year-old, yeah. you're paying adult fare for that 13-year-old. Wow. That's a big yeah. difference. Leads me into another question, which you mentioned peak season. Now, obviously peak season would be spring break over Christmas, probably in the summertime as well. If families are thinking of doing something like that, how far in advance should they be looking at to get what they're actually looking for in terms of a vacation, Kathy? A year. Oh, really? Especially Alaska. You know, if if they've if they've done the Caribbean multiple times and they're ready to do something different and they want to take the kids for a big Alaska trip, you have to to book Alaska a year out to get the side of the ship that you want, the cabin category that you right. want. Yeah. So there really isn't any such thing as a last minute. Well, you know what, kids, we're, well, here, here's they, where, where yeah, we're going. Well, they do have last minute, but you're left with the dregs of cabins that are left. So the earlier that you can book that you can plan and find your dates, the better off you are for sure. Super. Yeah. Kathy, this has been absolutely great information. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? I would like to add how important it is to work with a travel agent. You have a lot of options out there. It can be very overwhelming to try to figure out what's best for you when you've got one point of contact with me and we become friends. I mean, I consider all my clients my friends and I like taking care of them and I get to know them and Pick up the phone call after that first cruise and say, Kathy, I want to go X. I want to <laughs> go here. What can you do? And then Work. I do all the work for you. And it's <laughs> in, and then during the cruise, particularly with the airline situation, yes, you've got me as an advocate stateside to help you with any problems that you may run into while you're out there traveling. So it's very, very important to have a professional that has your back. I, I Absolutely. Think so. If folks wanted to reach out to you about a cruise on Royal Caribbean or Norwegian, how would they do that, Kathy? Well, they can reach me by two ways. Okay. They can call me. My cell phone number is 321-298-5829. And then my email address is kathycruises03 at gmail.com. Super. Super. I always like to ask my guests, uh, where where are you off to next? Because I know Ooh. as a travel advisor, part of part of the job is getting out there to experience the product. I founded a travel club here in my hometown and the pandemic just put a wrench in that. For two years, yeah. we were just stuck and couldn't do anything. This year, I finally was able to get my group together. So I'm taking 18 clients on Norwegian Breakaway in May to Rome and Italy for a 10-day cruise. Oh. And then in June... I'm taking a smaller group of club members, again on Norwegian, to on the Prima, the new one, from Reykjavik, Iceland, by way of Norway, to London. Super, super. Yeah. Well, it's fun stuff. <laughs> that cruise that does Iceland, Norway, and London sounds really interesting. Well, we'll have to have you back to regale us with all your fun Ooh. adventures on that Oh, cruise. I would love to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking Sound, forward to that one. It's going to be fun. Sounds great. Well, with that, Kathy, I'm just going to wish you safe and happy travels on all your fu future cruises and adventures. May the wind always be at your back. And I hope to see you on the Lido deck sometime soon. Hope so. Thanks for having me. Take care. Bye-bye.
And that about wraps it up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, Kathy Schmaus of Cruise Holidays of Vieira. If you'd like to reach Kathy, I will leave her contact information in the description. If you'd like to reach us, simply send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com, visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoyed this content, a like, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels!